the next question, uh, because we already calculated the loss for the dielectric loss, and this prime refers to the fact that this dielectric loss corresponds to the permittivity under constant stress. Now, if we measure the permittivity under constant strain loss, I'm not going to describe how to do that, uh, we would not have this prime. So this is sort of newish notation. Uh, sort of look at the literature. People are going to be reporting this value. Therefore, it's important to know. Uh, and so there's different ways and different ways to account for losses and to measure it <coughs> in piezoelectric materials. And essentially, uh, your piezoelectric material to a uh, to an impedance analyzer it looks like this. This is what the equivalent circuit looks like. You have a capacitor here, which is corresponding to your piezoelectric your permittivity under constant strain, not this constant strain and you have your capacitor here which is going to relate how your D coefficient and your a compliance coefficient uh, add to the energy the elastic energy within applied electric field and these and this um, inductor is representing that mass so this capacitance and this mass lead to the resonance frequency this capacitor and this inductance and this resistor here is accounting for losses so if you go in your impedance analyzer and you fit an equivalent circuit to your piezoelectric material of this type, you know, you go in and you fit of this type, I already described it, <coughs> <coughs> then you can use the L, C, and R values obtained. L, C, L1, you know, complete from this side, you know. You can use all of that to then determine the quality factor. And this is the IEEE standard of measuring the quality factor. But um, this is not the most accurate, or it's perhaps not the best way to measure uh, these material properties. So there are also other methods to measure the material property as well. And uh, we also will we'll focus on those methods as well. But realize that this exists, and this is a completely fine way to, return, to determine your uh, quality factor. But realize, um, because of the way you're measuring it, it may not be the most accurate, relevant for your for maybe a practical application or if you are measuring it in a different way, if that makes any sense. Namely, in, in my research, <coughs> I don't focus on this. Uh, I'll leave it at that. So, and the other way to determine losses from an impedance response is using a 3 dB bandwidth. So, as we mentioned earlier, that the tangent delta is determined from the off resonance measurement. However, the quality factor uh, is the mechanical quality factor, which is the uh, which is the factor relating to the mechanical losses occurring in the material. It uh, is determined through a resonance measurement, which you use the resonance or anti resonance measurement. <coughs> so, the mechanical quality factor is uh, results in amplification. Of vibration or an amplification of strain in the resonance condition so the way you measure it is by doing this process how do you measure the quality factor at the resonance the quality factor is measured by the 3 dB bandwidth which you first you determine your resonance impedance which is your lowest impedance value you multiply that value by square root of 2 and now this is the 3 dB impedance so you can imagine we have our we have our resonance frequency here we have some certain value ZR and then we have another impedance value here ZR times square root of 2 <coughs> so and we have also another value here ZR square root of 2 here you measure this frequency this frequency and this one you measure the difference in frequency, so the difference in this frequency corresponding to that impedance and the frequency corresponding to this impedance is the uh, change in the resonance frequency, is the change is, is, is the 3 dB bandwidth, and uh, actually this equation is wrong, uh, you have the resonance frequency divided by the delta F, uh, resonance frequency was determined by the lowest impedance, and this equals the quality factor. And the quality factor at resonance is also called Q sub A as well as Q sub M. 
So this is a this is a fine way to determine the mechanical quality factor. Losses at anti-resonance. So anti-resonance is also a, a resonance type occurring in the material and for academic reasons I'm not sure how practical it is for ap practical applications I haven't really seen it used or uh, really practical because typically we drive at resonance frequencies because we get a lot of amplification and resonance because we use constant volt we use voltage driving we don't really think about driving our devices with current <coughs> I believe <laughs> anyways so uh, if you want to get a similar process for the anti-resonance frequency where the impedance reaches a maximum you do the opposite you you cut you find the uh, anti-resonance frequency and in this case you divide by square root of 2 so here we have a, a, a bandwidth here we have a bandwidth you divide by square root of 2 and by doing this uh, this is backward again you, uh, you can find the quality factor at anti-resonance which is QB So what is QA and QB, and which one do I need to use for my measurements, and which one do I need to use for my simulations? So we can call A and B A-type resonance, which is the our typical resonance behavior, and B uh, is B-type resonance. So this is A-type resonance, this is B-type resonance. Maximum impedance and minimum impedance. So it gives you two quality factors. For the K31 mode, because the resonance frequency of the K31 mode beautifully corresponds to the compliance under constant electric field of the 1 1 direction, it then refers to uh, the loss directly of relating to the SE11, which is tangent phi. So tangent phi is mechanical loss. Tangent prime 1 1 is mechanical loss related to this value right here. Uh, but however, QB is not directly related to a specific loss parameter um, directly. There's a more complex analysis which needs to be done in order to relate QB to, <coughs> to the material properties. So typically, you measure QA for the quality factor. However, for the K33 mode, QB refers to the resonance frequency, to the mechanical resonance frequency, not the frequency which gives the largest vibration for a certain voltage. That is still the resonance frequency of lowest impedance. However, um, that frequency corresponding to a half a wavelength is the anti resonance frequency for the K33 mode, half wavelength displacement. So the K, the QB then is corresponding to tangent phi no prime. And tangent phi no prime is, uh, sorry, this is 3, 3. Tangent phi no prime corresponds to the compliance under constant electric displacement. And in this case, for the K33 mode, QA, in terms of material properties, you, you mean, meaning in terms of relationships with uh, material properties such as the compliance and the permittivity, it, it has a more complicated relationship. So uh, typically for reporting, uh, you can mention which way you used, what uh, frequency you used to measure, you know, did you measure at the quality factor. At, it's typical to measure the quality factor at resonance, meaning the lowest impedance point for reporting in, I believe, in the reporting of literature. You can also use the <coughs> IEEE method again. Uh, but the nice thing to measure uh, the quality factor at the resonance frequency is because it's most accurate at that point because the material properties depend on uh, how you're measuring them and if you're measuring with a constant voltage you're getting a large vibration at the resonance frequency itself but as you are moving far away from the resonance frequency you're getting a lower vibration and that equivalent circuit that you fit uh, using uh, your impedance analyzer fit it according to that varying vibration behavior and I'm talking too much but essentially uh, you can use the resonance frequency minimum impedance to report the quality factor in the literature. I think that would be a good solution and just mention how you did it. So there's a previous uh, researcher uh, at here at Penn State and he, uh, Dr. Yuan Zhang, had an extremely detailed analysis of loss parameters and 
their relationship with quality factors and it's a very detailed analysis and it's a great uh, if you are more interested in this if you're not so interested in it uh, it's going to be a very difficult read because a lot of equations anyways uh, so the k31 is the easiest mode to analyze and that's why we typically analyze it so as i mentioned qa or qb for standard research they give qm measured however they wanted to measure it using ieee standard or using uh, the other method uh, which is a 3 dB bandwidth uh, okay another topic which has been recently introduced by researchers at Penn State and is called piezoelectric loss not so recently but it's hasn't caught on so much yet it's called piezoelectric loss and piezoelectric loss accounts for a difference in the quality factors at residence and anti-residence because theoretically uh, the, the quality factors at residence and anti-residence should be the same however they're not and to explain this experimental uh, discrepancy you need to use this term called piezoelectric loss which accounts for the imaginary portion <coughs> of the um, of the piezoelectric charge coefficient so you can calculate the piezoelectric loss which is tangent phi sorry tangent uh, tangent theta uh, using these equations and these equations were derived were are uh, are found in uh, dr zhong's uh, thesis and they can also be found by in different papers by uh Uchino. and then i if you type in Uchino, Zhuang, if you search this up, you're going to find uh, some paper with this, these type of analysis on it. But his, his thesis is the best. If you don't have access to it for some reason, uh, maybe we can find a way to get you access to it. If you email me, I may, I may be able to direct you to a link. Uh, perhaps not just give it to you right away, but you know, direct you to a link that maybe uh, you're able to find it. I think it's available for free online. Yuan Zhong uh, thesis PSU. You type something like that, and you'll probably get it. So these are the references which are important to remember. Uh, the IEEE standard on piezoelectric electricity uh, for a lot of these equations. Uh, fundamentals of piezoelectric electricity uh, by Professor Ikeda which is not possible to find this book. So if you're looking for something particular, like for the KP mode or different analysis, you may have some luck asking me, and I may be able to get you some of what's in here. Finally, uh, uh, it, there's uh, Dr. Yuan Zhang's uh, thesis, which provides a very good analysis of all deriving all these loss factors for many different vibration modes and sort of completely characterizes all of the losses and all of the uh, real, co real coefficients for different piezoelectric resonators and how their losses are derived from the quality factors of resonance and anti-resonance. So I probably didn't do justice to this topic, uh, but my intention for covering all of this is that someone who is not, you know, who, who is finding uh, some difficulty accessing materials on p you know learning materials on piezoelectric materials can find some way to get in the door you know hopefully these this information now when you pick up the ieee standard you'll be like hey this is what hussein was talking about he was talking about this type of thing and and you know what's this quality factor business what's this 3db business what's this equivalent circuit business um you know what's this sd and se and you know all these little letters and numbers which are coming in which are confusing to beginners uh, I think that this hopefully this lecture these lectures are letting people in the door whereas the cost of entry and the headaches which would originally arise from a person just looking at these documents directly uh, these headaches may be significant all right thank you for watching uh, look forward to seeing you uh, in the next video